I'm Benzie. Hi, I'm Daniel. Hi, I'm Wan Ting. And we are the chair for Cancel Out You, and you are listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 127. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Hello. Hi, Norman. How are everybody? Hey, James. How are you, man? Ah, uh, hang in there. It's weird. I thought you were going to say everybody else's names first, and then mine. It's so odd. <laughs> I know. If people knew how many people we have now, that, that's going to be really interesting. In that case, let's move on to the next one. Don't Indeed. waste time on me. I'm not Indeed. worth it. Oh, God. Anyway, Rom, how are you? I'm okay. I'm awesome. I haven't slept all night, but still rolling. Why sleep? I am sleeping, but I just couldn't. I don't know why. You're talking to his subconscious. This is like Inception. Oh, God, no. But anyway, joining us today will be Gonzo. Gonzo? Is he there? Oh, no, not again. Oh, God. <laughs> Somebody call an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> we were introducing you, Gons. Oh, right, this is what I get for trying to browse through Tumblr on a call. <laughs> uh, so there's Gonzo, and we have Lionheart Cartoon. Hello there. Hello. Thanks for having me second week in a row. Yay! Next week you need to be there just to have the triple combo. Yay! That'd be nice, but I don't have enough mana right now. Oh. <laughs> anyway... Our guest for this week will be the people who run Cantalot U. Hey guys! Hello! Hey, I, I, I know that voice. <laughs> I know that do. voice! Hey! Hey! So, okay, um, who wants to introduce themselves first? Because I see a lot of names, but I got no idea who to pick. Boss, you go first! Okay, um, hi everyone. Um, this is Bensley. I'm uh, for Cantalot University 2014. Um, my. Destination is uh, convention chair. Mm. I've been there since uh, the beginning of the organization of uh, Cantalot U. And uh, throughout the way, we had a whole lot of different different people working working with us to help make it uh, awesome. Then Daniel and uh, one thing included, um, who will now introduce themselves. Mm. Um, Daniel, why don't you go first? All right. Uh, no, you went first, I'm going second. <laughs> second, second. Anyway, yes, it has second been off. 120 episodes since I sat in the guest chair. Man, that's a long time. Yeah, what have you been doing? <laughs> I have been busy with work and life and, you know, crap catching up with me. You know, I've been neglecting a lot of stuff over the past few years because of education. And now the education's over, so is my life. <laughs> Please explain to us what is this life you are talking about because yeah. I don't, I'm not familiar with. Oh the man, it's been it's been about eight months. Memories are fading. <laughs> I just oh rem- I just remember ponies and uh, talking to Norman on the show and suddenly wow, wham, Skype looks different. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether it's because I'm suddenly using a Mac or something. <laughs> oh my! Wow! Wow! Oh. <laughs> Tables have turned. Yeah, that's what growing up does to you. Wow. So, anyway, then, what's your role in Can You? Well, I was um, Bensley's right-hand man, basically his assistant chair mm-hmm. for Cantalot University 2014. Oh, awesome, awesome. And uh, last member of the committee that's on the call tonight, her name is Kiu Wanting. Please introduce yourself. Okay. Um, hi, guys. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, hey. my name is Wanting, and uh, I also help out in Can You. Yeah, and I just, I'm basically just in charge of, like, the events. Ah, so you're the events organizer. You're, you're the main, um, I, w- I won't say men because that's sexist. So you're the main woman that people go to for getting their events started, right? Um, more or less. I just help to like manage the venue. You need director, you need, you need a manager, and then you need the guy in between. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. Like, one, one thing I had a lot of experience, uh, prior to Ken Yuen, uh, because of that, um, she, she actually helped us to get a lot of connections here and there. That uh, helped us to secure a venue, get some sponsors as well, which is really critical to the organization of Kenya. Wow, that's the most important part. So let's speed things along because, um, as I understand, then don't have much time. So anyway, um, all three of you at the same time, favorite character, favorite episode? Well, same sequence, Ben's. Oh, me first. Oh, God. Uh, well, uh, my favorite character is uh, Fluttershy. Oh, yes. Um, why I picked Fluttershy? Well, hey, yeah, got bro around here. Okay, so the reason I picked Fluttershy was actually because um, ever since I was young, I've always had like uh, pets around the house. So 
Uh, I I really love to um, uh, spend time with animals here and there. I, all these pets are like rabbits, hamsters, uh, dogs, a whole bunch of them. So I, I found that uh, Fluttershy was a character that I could really relate to as well. So like you could connect of, on your pets on 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 a higher level, like Fluttershy. <laughs> yeah, it's like some connection. Like like even now, like because uh, I'm I'm actually like uh, uh, on this Skype call like from my friend's house and. Um, he, he has his dog and he told me his dog is actually like quite timid, but the dog just like came running up to me and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, might, might be like some natural affinity or something. Yeah. So did you fall from the 11th floor onto a bed full of butterflies? Oh god, no. <laughs> Realize that you had a talent for this. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> Buddy, I think I might have been dead. I wouldn't call it the 11th floor, really. Yeah, he does stay on the 11th floor. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Singapore, everything's high-rise. They can't build broad. They have to build up. Uh, yeah, but anyway, you stay Benz. on the ground floor, you're blessed. <laughs> ben, so what about favorite episode? Well, favorite episode. Uh, as for my favorite episode, I think I would have to say uh, that... I, I don't know. I'm, I kind of like a whole bunch of them, but... Uh, if I really had to say, have to like put one out there, I think I'd pick uh, Keep Calm and Flutter on from season three. Mm. That right. is yeah. a very good episode. Yeah, because uh, I, I find that um, uh, in in the episode when they actually like uh, reformed Discord, right? Mm-hmm. Like I I found I found that um, that that's like a situation that I find myself facing quite a lot in my in my real life. Like so, you reform people. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why my I, I know why this um, life of mine is over. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> Don't worry, I'll reform your life again. Um, well, um, so yeah, no, like I, 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 I like to like um, try to help out the people, the, the people around me. Like maybe if they they're having some problems, I, I try to like talk to them for a bit. Try to try to get them to maybe feel better. Try to tell them what they're doing wrong. And uh, it's it's more like I I find that uh, that's something that I can relate to as well. I guess that's like the main reason I like a lot of stuff actually. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. awesome. And next up is Dan. And you? Okay, so um, it's Pinky still the winner of my heart. Okay. Through and through, and um, I think some of you may be expecting me to say Pinky Pride is now my current favorite. It's not. Friend indeed still holds top spot. Friend indeed is awesome. Yeah, it holds top spot. Pinky Pride came close, came really, really close, but nah, Friend indeed still holds top spot. Oh, you cannot song. go wrong with any episode where Pinkie Pie is the protagonist. Yeah, and anything yes. written by Amy Keating Rogers. Correct. Right. Then again, she sucks in every other episode where she's not. <laughs> exactly, so. especially in season four. <laughs> wow, you guys are agreeing. That's not good. <laughs> Anyways, this is what happens when I not, disappear for a while. That's an anomaly. Oh my god, you actually are being reformed. I oh can't believe it. Wait, 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 check Google Earth. I'm that's sh- not a word. It might be happening around my house. Uh, let's move on, let's move on. What is that aura floating over it? <laughs> oh god, no. Anyway, one thing, that's what about you? singing. Oh god. Save us one thing, save us. Well, actually, I'm, I'm kind of tied between my favorite characters. Oh. It's between either Pinky or Rainbow. <laughs> I really, really can't decide. It's a, it's a very tough one. Uh, let's put them both because we never deny anyone um, from picking both. And favorite episode? Pinky Pride. I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's Pinkie fine. It's awesome. Fine. Pinky Pride is awesome. It's second place, so no problem. I love Pinky you're, Pride. You're picking the episode with Yordal Jankovic in yeah. it. We love you yeah. automatically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love, I love that. Weird Al, Weird Al is a winner. Coming. It's a Weird Al's complete winner. Yeah, you yeah. cannot go wrong with Weird Al Jankovic. Of course not. You cannot. We need a boneless now. We oh, need yeah. someone who loves boneless. Boneless is best pony. <laughs> Nobody this is boneless pony. is best pony. You're right. I went to be what Pinky Pride. No, I, I prefer boneless too. <clears throat> he was a little bit more cooperative in a sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, boneless one, RIP. So sorry, guys. You know? Uh, anywho, no. anywho. But uh, hey, he was key for that episode. Oh, true, true. And anywho, um, since there's a lot of many people and I, I don't want to block up time, I'm going to skip the other two questions. I'm sorry if you're looking forward to answering them. I'm sorry. So anywho, let's move on to the next topic. Next topic is housekeeping. Want to meet up with the host of the MBS show? If the answer is yes, you're in luck. Our host, amazing and talented James Cork and Norman Sanzo, that's me, will be attending BuckCon 2014. Yes. Meet up with Jelly. <laughs> oh my. Meet up with them and say hello and talk to them in person. 
also James Cock has something to say. What do you have to say, man? When whatever you say my name, you completely botched the pronunciation, and it sounds like Sweetie Pot is gonna have to do some extra work censoring that. <laughs> oh my god, we didn't have to pick that name. There is also <laughs> going to be an Ask Pony Tumblr panel at the convention. Uh, it's going to be on the Sunday morning at 9 a.m. That's 9 a.m. Very early for me to be awake. I don't know how am I going to make the panel. But it's going to be fun. And we're going to have Mega Shockwave, Sketchy Sounds, Hazel Hooves, Captain Horse, and myself talking about how do you make a panel? How do you make a, no, how do you make an Ask Pony Tumblr? How do you make it work? And how to start and how to keep it going. That's cool. A panel so, panel. <laughs> it's a panel about panels. So you can panel all your panels. And you can start, hello. <clears throat> James Cock. <laughs> Cock. Ah. James Cock. The name's Cock. James uh, Cock. A- anyway, hope to see you there you soon. You try to Nothing but grown-ups in this call. <laughs> Indeed. I think that I'm going to have to hey. change some diapers. <laughs> so, hey, I'm glad I'm keeping silence amid- amidst all this. <laughs> oh ah, too late. <laughs> Sansa, not you too. I take you as a mature person. Don't go into the James Cock back in la- on wagon. <laughs> so, so, in, anyway, we, yeah, we, we, you heard us right. We're going to BuckCon 2014. Meet us if there. If you don't catch them there, you can catch them at Cantalot University 2015. Mm. Yay! Hope so. Catch so, it, it, <laughs> Just a side note. They're going. I'm not. Oh, He should, Aww. man. But anyway, Nobody cares. <laughs> No See what I mean? Uh, I read the news and this is how I get treated. Uh, <laughs> oh my! So anywho, um, go go there and meet. Um, go look at the buck vendor table. What was it, James? The table you had, or you can show your stuff. It's the guest table where you can have things for sale if mm. you're a guest of the convention. Mm. I am like I am lucky enough. I didn't even. I didn't even take that into account. I didn't even know that making a panel instantly makes you a, a, a guest of the con. But since I count as a guest, they are going to let me put my stuff at the table. So it's going to be fun, 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 fun. Yeah, so go there and buy Jinx's stuff. And if I'm lucky, Jinx might promote my buttons over there. They're the 2014 exclusive MBS show buttons. Oh, there's uh, another set? <laughs> yeah, go take a look on Facebook. I've been posting them. And That's it's good. really cool. And there's the main six with um, Derpy and the MBS show logo and also James's ponies. Uh, that's what? Um, movie Slate and the uh, Cutie Mark? Yeah, Movie Slates and Movie Slates butt mark. Yay. Yeah. So, because, you know, like your previous uh, buttons that you made last year and the year before, they were selling like hotcakes this morning at Animangaki. You should have told me, man. I could have done something. but I didn't know. It, it was all uh, Charlie's. Yeah. But anywho, um, there's 2014 for Comic Fiesta, probably. I'll try and see. Oh, Who yes, knows? Yes. Yeah. So, um, there's that. And let's move on to the next topic. It's news time. And, Rom? I am Romuald of the MBS Show News, and in today's news, Jan Animation's panel reveals details about his upcoming project. During his panel recent Galacon, Jan presented two animatic for the audience. The first was animatic for Bun's Adventure 2, and the second was a pony music video for Pony Rock Anthem. During the question and answer segment of the panel, someone asked, given the current circumstances, will, you, will we see more Bun's Adventures? Shadybox replied by saying that they are working on a deal with Hasbro that would make both parties happy. After the panel, Jan made a note saying that we are still talking to Hasbro on the matter. As for now, the CND remains valid. We hope to get a final answer soon enough. Possibly something that will make us all happy. In the meantime, I thank you all for your support. Stay tuned, Jan. On his Twitter, he mentioned that both videos were made before the cease and desist happened. Links can be found in the show notes below. Okay, that's it. hang on, hang on. I need my soapbox. I need my soapbox. Okay, hang on. Okay. Uh, start on the box. Okay. Sit re- sit ready. Okay. All right, all right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I. That's not a word. Told you. You. That's not a word. Pieces of. That's not a word. Your anger. James. Your reaction to. So shut. That's not a word. Let me finish because. This affecting your brain. Your reaction to the CND and the close up and the, the the takedown of the videos and all that. It was pathetic. Because you guys didn't think that this was happening. Do you really think that Hasbro is going to be stupid enough to close down a person so talented without offering him a deal first? Actually, In yes. that, not <laughs> only that, not only that, but they also revealed that Hasbro had no idea 
that the subsidiary that released the CND did such thing. It that Hasbro legal, uh, the Hasbro legal department, they did this without telling Hasbro. Hasbro learned about this later, and then they they did damage control, which is what, which is what happened. Something tells me in the future they're going not only to uh, unlock uh, the first button mash episode and the other videos, but they are also going to make a short series based on this character. In that, if they are working, if they say that they are working on making a deal. Uh, that will make everybody happy. They are, they, they're going to end up with a limited license to keep making episodes. I am coming to you with my, with my fan and slapping it on your noses because of the reaction that the entire fandom had in that I was, I was alone saying this. And everybody was saying that I was wrong. And this proves that I was right on what I was saying. So you guys, your the reaction, I'm not talking about you guys. Stands. Let's wait. Give it some time. I'm not talking about you guys on the call. Uh, Yeah, I'm not talking about you guys on the call, but everyone else who was (laughs) Hasbro is evil. (laughs) You guys have no idea. Okay, so you have. Oh God. Sorry. Sorry. But yeah, okay. Let me get down from my soapbox. That's that's what I needed to say. Before before we have everyone else go into a rampage, I I think we, we should ask Lion here because he's part of the animation community. And what do you have to say about this, man? I know a lot about this. Mm-hmm. I can safely say don't get your hopes up. What Shady said was too much. It's not something that he should have said to start with because it's not helping anyone. So I can't tell too much about this because I know a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of part of that deal. So right now... Uh, there's very little that can be really said that has some substance. And what Shady said could very well have been a problem for Jan. So don't get your hopes up. Hopefully things will go better. But there's nothing we can say about it now because the decisions have still have yet to be made. Legal stuff usually happens behind closed doors for a reason, and it's to prevent interference. And right now there's a lot of it, and it's very difficult to get something out of that. Hmm, okay. okay. Understandable. So I'm just going to go around the table. So um, James and Lion already had their say. Rom, what about you? Well, I just said, we all told you. We all told you. Don't jump into conclusions until you get your facts straight. All right. And Gons? Right now, um, the only thing I can know for certain is how to make sure that you don't wind up kind of in the same situation as, like, uh, Jan Animations does. And uh, I know everybody's going like, uh, da-da-da-da-da, but... Um, we might as well, like, uh, I do know of what the criteria was that might have caused the CND. Um, and hopefully this will pretty much set an example as to what you can and can't do within the legal confines of what Hasbro thinks. Hmm. Exactly. Uh, it's a precedent. It's what they call a precedent. Precedent? Anyway. Yeah, precedent. Well, precedent. 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 I that, think, yeah. Okay. So it will affect the whole of the community, the whole of the the animators and well, art makers out there. That's the thing, too. Well, well yeah, uh, but keep in mind, um, it won't affect totally everybody. Like you said, I guess you, it'll probably affect some art makers, probably some of the uh, animators, because I ended up noticing something when I was at BronyCon, okay. and uh, this was this will be pretty much be verified by about everybody. We had an animators panel. At BronyCon, the room was filled. Oh, my. Which means that there will be people who try to be like the next Jan animations. And it might have, and it might end up uh, getting issued CND if they're not careful. Because I know a couple of friends who's trying to do damage control and what have you, but there are still people out there who's probably going to be sharing uh, some of the illegal assets that were leaked out from DHX Studios and might and people uh, you know potential animators might get a hold of them thinking well this is going to be easy and it's going to come and bite them in the butt well for starters Hasbro is taking down everything that's been using the leaked assets or at least it's uh, been not like... every one of them not every one of them sadly but I mean it's fair I that they up... hunt after it are you talking about are you talking about that one uh Analyst video that used the assets and the video is still up and running even though yeah. it did use the, yeah, uh, I yeah, know about that. It's still one. kind of up. It's still kind of up. And my friends who are helping out with a little bit of damage control 
uh, has warned this person already, and basically we're hoping that she will actually be hit. She will actually uh, be, uh, I don't know. Um, Compliant and take the video down as well? Or the section of animation that uses the illegal assets. But well, in the in this case, it basically becomes a battle of the egos. Let's see who has the biggest ego and take down the video or not. So yeah, until until like Hasbro comes at I'm them, not supposed to, <laughs> I'm not supposed to say who this person is. I'm not even sure if Norman will allow me to say it, but uh, I bet everybody will know who it's it is. It's not called so. names, yes. Let, let, yeah, let's I'm not going to be calling names. names. All I can say is, if she values her popularity so much, and if she values also her fans and uh, what have you, she should seriously consider. Hmm, it's understandable because from what I do understand of the Hasbro takedown, it's some it has something to do with looking super short accurate. Too accurate for, you know, mm, too, accurate. too accurate for like a fan animation looking like something that might have came out of the studio themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's gone and I wouldn't blame him because some people have gone to the point to where some people will mistake a sh- uh, fan animation from something f- straight from the show. Mm. And it's kind that's, of a bad thing when you think about that's, it. That's, that's been happening even before Jan Animations was producing any big animation, actually. That's been happening for a long time. And I mean, like, Zachary funny, Rich got no, permission. Yeah, but nobody is seeing this. From Hasbro's point of view, which I find it kind of hilarious and unfair because there is no villain here. It's very easy to put Hasbro as like the evil galactic empire from Star Wars and make mm-hmm. Mike Bogle the emperor when <laughs> it's not that situation. Hasbro is pro- pro- protecting their legal, uh, the, 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 their copyright on their, their characters. Yeah. And on the things that they, they put money on and that they spend money on. If they don't do this, they're going to lose money. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, this is like, we're talking about uh, people's jobs. We're talking about other families. We're talking about other things. And here we, from our position, we may not have as much defending as they do. I mean, unless we create something 100% original, then yes, we have the right to stand bef- beside it and defend it. But mm. we are talking about fan projects. True, true. If I am, if I work on something and I make it a hundred percent original that has no connection with MLP, and it it might have inspiration or not, but imagine if it has zero connection with MLP, and someone comes and and does the exact same thing and starts uh, showing the potential to gain money from it, I'm going to jump on them legally if possible. Mm. A Hasbro is just reacting normally. Or at least Hasbro's uh, legal department, which I still I'm still not sure if if what happened was what really happened about the, the you know uh, uh, if Hasbro was aware of the C and D that was issued hmm. that from what it's been told they were not. So well, that's besides the point. My God. But but anyway, Dan, what about you with the gen animation um, thing? Well, I was quite indifferent. I was a bit disappointed that I might not be able to see Button Mash again. Mm-hmm. I didn't know because I I you know. I hate the law, so I'm just basically like, uh, well, Hasbro just tore another CND off their big pad of CNDs on their table. I, I didn't know how it worked. Mm. So by the time, um, how do you say, they say, oh, um, Jan is talking his way out of it, I'm like, yeah, finally, there's a glimpse of hope for this. But to be honest, I was quite indifferent. I mean, it happened to Fighting is Magic. I got riled up for that. And then uh, it happened to a couple of other things, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it, it didn't happen to White Dove, but it happened to a few others. But... All in all, when I heard about it, I was like, oh man, not again. It's just another day in Hasbro. I thought it was just, you know... I mean, okay, I'll be frank, I don't like Hasbro, but what the heck. Oh, okay, that's... And, uh, it's, yeah, it's my opinion. And, well, the only thing that I hope doesn't come out of this, I hope there's not a, you know, slippery slope, a sense that it could lead to a chain reaction of a lot of um, other animators, or budding animators for that matter, to face a similar fate. Because, as far as I know, um... Correct me if I'm wrong, that um, for Flash Animation, Pony seems like a good start for people because um, people like Jan, if I'm not mistaken, he shares his assets, doesn't he? Oh, no, sorry, Zachary Rich shares his assets. So, you know, uh, it's a nice place to start for people who just want to get into animation. And I wouldn't want to see, you know, if Hasbro takes things down, you know, especially in, if they had have to go to, a, not to say an emergency phase, a strict phase where people aren't listening to them and, you know, turn up the heat. I, d- I wouldn't want to see it go there, but, well, just wishful thinking on myself. <laughs> I don't know. I can't, com- can't comment much on it. Mm, okay. So, Bensley, what do you think? 
Um, regarding the CND and button mesh thing, uh, personally, I I don't really like uh, go around and really bother myself too much by with uh, most of the uh, fandoms creations. But I but I personally loved uh, Buttons Adventures and I, I I liked what came out of it. But then I I just like opened up Facebook one day and I'm like, uh, what CND and and then stuff uh, kept being taken down. And then I, I was kind of I was kind of sad that um, that uh, some of these um, stuff, all these fan-made stuff that I like was being taken down. But um, I personally try not to get too affected by them because I've already seen them. So I kind of remember it. I appreciated it already. So yeah, I, I just try not to be too affected by it. I don't really have too much of a too much of a personal stand on this. Hmm, all right. And one thing, what about you? Oh, mine is basically what, what Ben said. I, I <laughs> like the, I really like the button mesh videos on YouTube. I, I kept rewatching them. <laughs> but yeah, basically, I don't, I don't know a lot to actually make a stand on this. Mm, okay, it's, it's okay, it's no problem. So, uh, if that's the case, I'll move on then. So, anyone to add in anything more? James? Uh, let me dust off the soapbox again. <laughs> Perfectly honest. God damn. Uh, you can never know when it comes to this kind of issue, especially if lawyers are involved into it. There are, uh, there, there might or might not be a deal. There might or might not be something working in the in the backstage. And this kind of thing is that if one thing, if I learn something from being on the internet and dealing with this kind of stuff is that there there's so many things going behind the scenes that we never know of and that we will never know of that things can change within the day hell they, they can change within the hour so whatever we know now might change tomorrow and we never know, may know, we may know tomorrow may shift what we knew before so we are, we cannot be sure now the only thing that we that uh should be left of this is that we like to overreact. I like to overreact. <laughs> Everybody does. Um, and the way that the fandom reacted when those videos were removed was... That's not a word! Disgusting. It was basically like watching a train wreck in slow motion because <laughs> it like kept getting worse and worse the longer it goes on. This week You're on National Geographic, Cyrus. Seconds to Disaster. <laughs> you talk about, you talk about Circle Jerk, that was a spiral jerk. It couldn't <laughs> got worse. In that, the, 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 the way people reacted to this was horrible. And I was there in the sidelines, sitting calmly, with my popcorn saying, guys, it's going to blow off, it's going to end, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. I mean, come on, you knew this was going to happen sooner or later, it's, it's too good. It's too close to the show, you know they are going to take it down yeah. sooner or later. It's, Come on. I mean, That's yeah, just it's design. just somebody going a little over the, over the line and, uh, just, it just, we went to, to a point to where Hasbro had to intervene because we went a little too far. Even though we like to show and whatnot, the show accurate animations, and in some cases making money off of some of these animations, like offering commissions for this and whatnot, is just stepping over the line that we shouldn't have crossed. In the first it's, place, legally speaking, though. Yeah, it is a stepping on the toes of a giant. What do you think it's going to happen? The giant is going to wake up and he's going to smash you against the floor with his fist. That's, yeah, that's that, if he feels it. <laughs> uh, what? If you, t- if you step on a toe of a giant, he wouldn't feel it. You use a sledgehammer, which is probably the level that Jan was on. <laughs> then yeah. Do you know that in that even in nature, animals attack when they are feeling threatened. Mm, true. Hasbro felt threatened enough to actually have uh, the CND issued, even if they did, which we still don't know. It's it's uncertain if they did or not. Shady says they they didn't know. Mm. I am willing to believe Shady because uh, uh, companies companies don't always know. Like a, a giant with many heads doesn't always know what all the other heads are doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Very a lot of miscommunication happens in the corporate world. Mm. Yeah. So maybe someone says, "Oh hell, even in the government, this is this happens." Oh everywhere. yeah, that, that happens in everywhere. The, yeah, they tell you, they say, "What I mean, what is this? I didn't issue this 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 uh, CND. Who did? Legal did. Legal. 
<laughs> God damn it, get me the head of the legal department. I'm pretty sure something like that happened on the on the Hasbro headquarters. Probably. They were like, oh my God, what's going on there? And then so, they just see the, the fire that's become of the fandom and everything smoking in the distance. And they're like, oh. That's not a word. Again. <laughs> <sighs> hey, you ordered it pizza. Seagull <laughs> <Sounds> ordered it. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's just like that old movie, Nine to Five. Sometimes, some people just do stuff without your consent, or uh, even stealing your stuff, and just yeah, ruining it for everybody. Mm-hmm. But like I like I said before, when when this whole thing was burning and and all that, now that the things seem to be calmer, I I. Ascribe to Lions a comment in that mm-hmm. don't keep your hopes up. The same way that I told everyone not you'd overreact with, with this. Do not overreact with uh, with that. You don't overreact with this uh, glimmer of hope that might turn into a glimmer of nothing mm-hmm. uh, in time. So just stay stay cool. Mm-hmm. Stay calm. Keep, but, yeah, yeah, a lot of things could have gone better. I'm totally down with that. And again, mm-hmm. things are moving so slowly that it hurts everyone right now. However, you know, dialogue has been opened, so things can get better, but they, you know, can't really get any worse than this. Mm-hmm. So that's that, that is true. Open but mind. That, that's all that's needed. Yeah. Open mind. And, mm-hmm. and it will be if, like, if Jan was a. That's not a word. Which he isn't. He is the most laid back, funny, easygoing, normal guy I have seen in a very long time, and I'm like. And I can vouch for that. Yeah, oh, no. and if he was... That's not a word! Oh my god, it would be a terrible situation, but no, no, Jan, Jan is a grown-up, he's a big guy, and he knows when to get mad, and he knows when to keep his emotions down. That's that's what counts. For the so, most part, he's a nice guy, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's funny how he was so calm when they told him to take down the videos, and the entire fandom was getting mad for him. It's like, it, it, was, it was hilarious. <laughs> Like, he was so calm and like, it's okay guys, don't worry, and everybody was going, TAKE THAT ONE HUS, BRO! He, <laughs> says that he, obviously he had fire. people to talk to and keep him in line, I'll tell you this, but at the same time, I mean, I would be mad if our stuff would be taken down as well, but just lashing out right away is never a good idea, and he knew that from the get-go, so yeah. it helps he everyone knew. just, you know, remaining, keeping a cool head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Knee jerk reactions are the worst. And believe me, yes. if someone goes and takes down movies late, uh, I will be angry. I will be really angry. But I have you guys to calm me down. And I think I will, I will be able to. I, I better not, better not, not only put that. me in the call. Don't put me in the call when that happens. <laughs> not only that. I doubt, I doubt you get taken down because you got your own style. You get, you, you got your own oh. style. It doesn't make me the show. And, uh, it, basically you don't have any grounds for a C and D as far no, as I'm, I'm concerned. You're not I know, I know that. One. I know that I am. I know that I am safe with movies. Lit. I was just putting an example. Like, hell, movie is a very small block. Nobody cares for for it. It's it's tiny. And there are other blocks like Flufflepuff or or Ask Pan Pony, Discorded Hoofs, uh, uh, Pirate Dash, and Ask Bucky. They are all way more popular than movies. Late, and they are not in fear of a CND because they have their own style. Mm-hmm. Hell, a, a fluffy mixer. He does Flufflepuff. Is really close to the show, but it's not like the show because it has a very distinctive style of animation that makes it instantly safe mm, true, true. so th- there is nothing to worry about on top of that and then you get a CND from Time Warner or somewhere <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, we're sorry sir but you didn't like the Dark Knight Rises I think we're gonna have to take down your blog sorry oh, no. so okay here's something yeah, interesting we were right? scared for a while too mm. yeah here's something interesting that you guys mentioned um, how the animation quality looks like the show or whatnot, and uh, Dan, do you remember Journey of the Spark? Yeah. We we talked to them before, mm-hmm. remember? Oh, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So, they got CND. Yeah, I heard as well. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, they did. So, what went wrong there? See, here here's the thing where what is not safe and what's safe, because from what I'm seeing here is if you use anything related to the show as in characters, theme, or even environment, you'll yeah. get... See, indeed. It's also partially because of how much you share and how much you release to the world. Information control is actually very important. And um, to tie this in um, with the topic of today's show, which is um, with Can You and mm-hmm. conventions in general, information release is really deadly important. That's why um, I was in charge of media for Can You, and you got to oh, really no. <laughs> be careful of what you release and when you release it and how you release it because 
you don't want to put too much information out there and you know, if you want to release it, you can't release everything at one go. If you, if you release like teasers and it has was like, oh look, that doesn't look right, that has to go. You know, some things some things are better if you release them in stages. Some things are better if you go for an explosive release, like just go for the final project, bang right there. And you know, if you've done it, you're not in fear of Hasbro. Come, if Hasbro pulls the plug, it's already up. You know, there's something about the internet. The moment <laughs> it's uploaded, you cannot take it down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true, it's, that's true. It's, it's nearly impossible. That's yeah, true, you post true. it on the internet, it stays there forever. Yeah. Yes, sir. Same like um, yeah. um, fighting his magic tribute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which again, <laughs> it's, it's basically fighting his magic entirely with all the main six and everything. It didn't got. It. I have. I have it on my computer. It didn't got taken down. It got completed. So, that's why some of the ga- some of these things like conventions, especially you notice Bronicon doesn't announce when. Oh, we're still looking for. I mean, okay, can you make this mistake? But other conventions don't announce before they haven't found a venue, before they haven't before they have sufficient funds and things like that. Because when they announce, you notice, hey, look at this. This con knows what they're doing. They have their money. They have their place. They have their people. They know exactly what they're doing. So you get a confident response. And uh, if you have. Something that trickles information, uh, let's just, um, I'm not gonna make any examples here, but if you trickle information out little by little, then people are gonna get like, oh, what are these guys doing? Look suspicious. And then when somebody, you know, important, like maybe an authority comes by and like, oh, we don't like the way you're running this, so we're gonna pull the plug, bye bye. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you don't want that to happen. So information control on behalf of whatever project you're doing is really, really important. Mm. Understandable, yes. understandable. Yes, that is one reason why there is that that very well-known non-disclosure agreement clause. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. When you're working on a project, you're supposed to keep it secret until it's, it's released. Yep. Perhaps that's why there hasn't been any uh, any news regarding fighting his magic for a long time. You mean Because hooves? they want to... Uh, what? You mean Hooves, the one that's official from uh, yeah, the six. The, no, the completely new oh, uh, project they are working one. on with Lauren Faust. Oh, yeah, Hooves. The one yeah. with all the... Oh. Yeah, I, I think it's name? called Hooves. I'm not 100% yeah. sure. The one with Lamas, was it? Yeah, so yeah, they, yeah, 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 that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're working on it. They have, there hasn't been an official announcement in a long time. That's maybe because they want to keep it all as secrecy and as uh, not reveal assets, not reveal characters, not reveal yeah. anything. It's also because when you have an explosive launch, you're like, bang, whoa, full project, finished, ready. Mm-hmm. It, look, it will have this kind of really awesome explosion where people will really pour in and really see what it's about. You build up a suspense and a hype. I mean, even if it dies down, you relatively got people who are aware of the project already. True, and true. People keep talking about just, it. Nobody, nobody's going to forget about Main 6 because, exactly. I mean... Is, isn't it like one of the things that every single person in the fandom knows about? Oh, true, true. In that yeah. you say main six and they're like, oh, you mean the fighting game? Or the ponies. Uh, guys, yeah, the guys who were doing the fighting game. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, that, them, them. They that's finished right. the game or whatever, or they found difficulties or they have Lauren Faust working for them. I'm like, ah, oh, that's cool. That's so true, awesome. True. But in, anywho, uh, I, I think that's all for this topic and we should probably move on to guest time. So anyway, <laughs> Rom? Wait a minute, we don't have any more news? Well, no, that's the thing. This, slow oh my news God, week, that gentlemen. It? Yeah, that's the thing. Slow news. And if you notice, this is it. this is three oh, news shit. compiled to one. Well, wow. <laughs> I apologize, sweetie, bot, for having to make you work extra. I just get very heated and passionate when it comes to this kind of thing. Oh my. That's not a word. Oh yeah, that's gonna be the team for today. But anywho, Rom, take us out. All right, Momi Alt of the MBS Show News. Back to you, Norman. Thank you, Rom. And let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. In today's guest time, we have the chair show, Cantalot You. Hey, guys, how are you doing? Hey. So, Hi. mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? My name is Benzley. I'm 17. In the Brony fandom, I'm just like an administrator of like a local group. And I I don't really do too much in the fandom, but uh, aside from uh, chairing um, the Cantalot University Convention in 2014, and aside from that, I'm actually like an aspiring plushie maker. But uh, due to studies, I don't I don't really have like too much time to work on that for now. Hey hey hey! But, you have a machine that does the stitching for you. How lazy can you get? You need to plan everything. Okay, okay. I'll do something. It's not that simple. <laughs> Work is hard, man. <laughs> Indeed. So next up is Dan, right? Um, yeah, why not? Um, I'm Daniel. If you don't know me, you can go to the mbsshow.com, look for episode number seven. But never mind. Um, <laughs> basically, yeah, I was deputy chair of Cantalot University. Basically, I uh, I did the work that couldn't be done in Singapore. You know, censorship, chew bubble gum stuff. <laughs> okay. Yeah, bubblegum is illegal in Singapore, by the way, in case you didn't know. 
Yeah, it is. Why? Singapore is very strict. Because they don't want people sticking it on the doors of the train and places like that. Uh, They've apparently jammed the doors before. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can still buy cigarettes. I'm pretty sure you can still buy cigarettes. Cigarettes are fine. You can buy cigarettes there, but like, not gum, not gum. (laughs) <laughs> Hypocrisy of the worst caliber, and you think that America is bad when it comes to that kind of thing. Blah! <laughs> Singapore wins them tenfold. My uh, yeah, you know, you, you know, I was just talking to a friend, and like, uh, I don't know whether this is legal to talk about on the show, but... No, 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 it, no, no. It, 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 we discover that shoes get uh, uh, deteriorate the sidewalks. We're going to eliminate people. People are <laughs> illegal. <laughs> uh, anywho... Uh, Go they... home, it's absolutely mandatory. So... Logic! <laughs> Oh boy. So anywho, Dan, uh, you are responsible for whatever Wednesday tells you to do? Um, sort of that. Mm. And, um, I just handle most of the media stuff. Press releases, website, Facebook. Ah, uh, alright, alright. If you actually read the Can You website, like, who's this guy? He doesn't know any art. Yep, that's me. <laughs> alright, then. Alright, then. So, last up is one thing. So, one thing, what do you do? Oh, okay. Hi. So, I'm also 17. Oh. This year. So basically what I do is I just help to like find connections like uh, anywhere from sponsors to to like find the event venues. She did a lot of talking for us mm. to help yeah. talk, yeah. talk to people outside. So and just to clear things up, this is not a paradox. I'm 22. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. So, okay, um, obvious question here is, wow, you guys are so young. How, how did you get things started? Give me a second, I need to get to the TARDIS. Okay. (laughs) Daniel, Daniel, you're not supposed to reveal a secret. (laughs) You're 17, I'm the one who needs it, you're fine. (laughs) Don't get close to my DeLorean, you hear? Don't get close to my DeLorean. (laughs) I have a Proton Saga, it looks the same. Oh god, no. But anyway, considering that you guys are from Singapore, I'm pretty sure the TARDIS and the DeLorean turn into a giant robot, so I'm pretty sure (laughs) that's going to be cool. (laughs) But anyway, Ben, please continue on. Well, as I was saying, although we're like, uh, like comparatively young as compared to what most other like committees would be, uh, composed of in terms of their staff and the people working there, I think, I think that age is, age is just like, uh, sort of like this limiting factor that society kind of puts in. But I think that if we have a clear idea of what our goal is and how, how we want to get there, and if we, have the ability to and we can work on it properly i think that's um what's more important and what uh will make sure that uh, our event is successful and for that i think that of course not everyone is perfect we have our flaws and that's why um we have this committee here to make up for each other's flaws and so we have more brains to work on it so that we uh, can make a better decision hmm, that's that sounds awesome that sounds awesome because um <clears throat> I live close, but I really wanted to go, but timing was not on my side. So if I remember right, it was a day con, was it? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, it was one day. How was that running? Because um, I heard, uh, well, I, I really didn't heard, but I was involved in a uh, anime kind of, um, what you might call this convention. And it, well, it ran for two days and it was hectic. How, how about you guys? How, how did you, how did it run for you guys? I'd say it ran better than expected, actually. Like, uh. Best answer available. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, right? Like, better than expected. Like, um, just before the event itself, we were really. We actually braced about. for impact on the morning. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? We're like, oh boy, this is gonna be hell. <laughs> and then, you know, we, we, it's kind of the advantage of over preparing for things is that, you know, the, the phrase, you know, hope for the best, prepare for the worst, it really, really pays off in things like this. Mm. All right. That's a very good philosophy to have, to be honest. Yes, True. it is. For yeah, any it con is. chairs, for any con chairs, that is a good philosophy yes. to live by. For anything in general, actually, because okay. if you're prepared for the wars, you can always uh, act ahead of time. That is a very good philosophy. Mm-hmm. You have, you have, you you have backup plans for every single thing. Mm. Yes, yes. That's awesome. Whereas we partners. had contingencies for contingencies of certain things, and it's like, if this doesn't happen, we have a fallback. <laughs> yeah. If that doesn't happen, no. we're screwed. <laughs> yeah, you, Basically, you we made, hope you, everything goes yeah, you, as planned, and then if, made, not, if it doesn't go, we, we're just like, oh, that's not a word. Okay, let's, uh, guys, guys, what do, you, what do we do? Okay, let's do this. Yeah. We play it by we played it by ear a lot, and um, uh, if you've seen the schedule, you can actually download our program book. It's still available for oh. download. I'll send you all a link to put in the show notes. Uh, it's a very loosely planned schedule. We 
basically wanted people to come, you know, in a convention, we can't have events back to back to back again mm-hmm, and again mm-hmm. because, you know, people come to the events like this to meet up and talk and have fun with one another. So we had very few simultaneous events and we had events spaced out with the uh, breaks of about an hour to 45 minutes uh-huh. in between each event. So people could get to socialize and mingle with each other without people yelling on the stage for <laughs> attention. All right. So James, what you wanted to say? No, I was, uh, I was meaning to say that you might find that funny in that, oh no, this didn't work, then let's go for this, and let's go for that, but that's, that's good, that's plain ahead, that is a very mature sentiment that some conventions don't do. I'm not going to mention which one out <laughs> of this fandom and maybe in the world of Tumblr, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. let's just, yeah. Let's I not spend one extra happens. hour on this. Yeah. <laughs> but I yeah, actually I was going to ask. Was meaning to ask something kind of related to that, but not entirely. Uh, okay. Would you guys uh, follow, uh, like, look at other conventions, uh, not just pony conventions, but conventions in general, and you say, oh, that's a good idea, let's do that, or that's a terrible idea, let's not do that? Like, do you follow any others to, to see what they do right and what they do wrong? Well, it's more of, um, you know, we don't really like to see what they did, but the, the main focus we have is how they did it, because a lot of things are very, really brilliant ideas. A lot of conventions that we see in the past that have had failures, had had very brilliant ideas, but just executed in the wrong way. So, if you ask us, we say that we look at how it was done, and we learn from that rather than what was done, because ideas are all over the place. In fact, we had a bucket load of ideas for Can You, and not all of them yeah. happened, but um, we focused a lot on the execution, how to do it, and that's what helped us get to where we were. Back then, in the really early months of Can Use organization, we uh, a whole bunch of us actually we brainstormed a whole lot of ideas, activities. We we really loved uh, what we had there. We would really really love it if it actually happened in the convention. But mm. I think um, because of some of some uh, like say constraint mm-hmm. in terms of time. Like uh, later on, it it kind of I guess it kind of like drove us to um, realize that um, in organizing something successful, I think uh, what's most important is are we able to execute it well and try not to go for those like super fanciful things when you can't get the basics right. So mm. just get what what you can have and get those uh, more easily done ones and do it really well, and then that's uh, that's going to please the uh, customers. The audience. I do like that philosophy. It's true. Like, you know, doing something simple right is better than doing something grand and make doing a half-ass job out of it. Mm, true, true. Uh, I do agree with that. And I'll, also, I, I noticed in the Facebook group, like uh, the one called Asian Bruni Herd, uh, okay. I've I seen a lot of pictures during that event where people were taking pictures, they were having fun, and like... For me, seeing that, I got really jelly for not going, but yeah, show responsibility and whatnot. <clears throat> so, um, if I understand, that place was kind of a dance studio? Mm, it, it was like, uh, well, the venue, the venue list did say multi-purpose studio. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like, uh, specifically for dance, but. Mm-hmm. You're a life hacker, everything's multi-purpose, even your car <laughs> trunk's multi-purpose. <laughs> We're gonna have a ponycon in my trunk. Oh god, no. <laughs> car boot nails! <laughs> that would be cool. So, um, it's, it was a multi-purpose kind of deal. So, um, how much was the ticket for that event? Well, uh, one ticket actually uh, cost um, ten dollars. Ten. Wow, that's cheap. Yep. Ten. Just for really? Entry. Yep. Twenty-six wow. ringgit after conversion. But still, ten Singapore yeah, dollars yeah. is kind of cheap. That is really affordable. Mm-hmm. That is that is very very affordable. Yeah, actually. I mean, like. You have it cheap and people can just come into the uh, venue and buy stuff. Like, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, pricing, pricing was, uh, thought, thought out because we initially, because, uh, in the really early organization of Kenya, it was like supposed meant to be a two day and then we realized that we had to convert it down to one. And then because of that, we kind of cut down the ticket price. Then we decided that, um, cause, and in Singapore, it's really small. It's not like people are going to have to like um, fly from other parts of Singapore to mm, this part just to attend. So we thought like um, our audience is basically like Malaysia, Indonesia, um, some of the other countries in Asia and also, but mostly the entirety of Singapore. So when we thought of that, we thought like families might want to come in. 
So maybe mm. some of the family members, the parents, they may or may not be interested in My Little Pony, but if they if they're not, I think that uh, we actually like put the price down to ten, so that um, even if they're not interested, they might still be inclined to go in to check it out, bring their daughters there, bring their sons there, all that kind of stuff. That that would be that, that's awesome. I mean, the ten dollar um, price tag for a con ticket that that is rare. I haven't heard of that before. And wow. you know, yes, I actually I actually have. It reminds me a lot of the way you are describing it and all that. It reminds me a lot of the the local conventions that I go uh, I go to in my city. They're like very small. Not more than five hundred people come every day uh, to those conventions, but the price is very similar, and it's very much for locals. Or people that live around the area of Granada. So I, I can totally relate to that. And some of these conventions are put together by big companies. So it, it surprises me in the good way, uh, how such, uh, young people like you guys, you are, you have the clarity of mind to put this effort and make it successful. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it, it takes a lot to get it off the ground, actually. Mm. Yes, true yes. That, true that. I mean, it, it it happens a lot. People try and get it off the ground. Say, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, and then like two weeks yeah, later, it, it dies. It's just it's a lot of work. Yeah, because it <laughs> sounds like fun, doesn't it? It sounds like fun. It's like, oh, let's put together a place where uh, all pony fans can hang out, and then it turns into a, it can turn into a, a logistical nightmare. I'm not saying it's not fun, but it's a kind of a price you pay for it. If you 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 will you will it will put you through, it'll really test your limits, but. When you reach the end of it, when it comes to that moment, especially at the canyon when we shouted, you know, thank you all for coming, you'll never feel better. It's the total yeah. payoff right there. It's an awesome I, feeling. I, I can just imagine, like, looking at all those happy faces, those satisfied customers, and, well, just being I wouldn't there. call them customers. They're like con goers, you know. We're not con selling goers, them a product so or something, in a sense. Friends. <laughs> Okay. Well, you kind of are. You're, pro- you're pro- like when you promote something, and it is costing money. I think it's a product. It can be uh, something physical, or it can be an experience. It is an experience, but the thing is that we're not giving them the experience. The experience actually comes from each other. The c- whole idea of companionship within a con is because mm-hmm. of how many people attend. That's a, that's what I mean. Hmm. I do like that philosophy. I do like that philosophy. So one one thing, how did you manage to get it? Because from what I've heard of. Like previous posts from the Can You website, they were still looking for it and whatnot. So, how did you manage to get the well? I would say perfect location for the convention. I actually joined the the committee pretty late. Mm-hmm. So, um, I had quite of I had quite a few links like before I I knew all of them. So, I just went to do a bit of research and then I went to like call up the people and she asked if there was a there was space, like, because everyone thought of getting a location more central. Mm-hmm. But there's, all the prices there were just like really overpriced. Mm-hmm. They just want to rip people's money off. Oh, so, yeah, so I, I went to find an, another place which was near the central, but it's a bit ulu. Okay. <laughs> it's a bit ulu. So, yeah, but they had a relatively good price tag there. So I just recommended it to Bensley. Mm, so but now here, here's the thing. A lot of us don't get it. Something is a real Singaporean thing. Singapore is a red dot on the world atlas, and I mean, like, for me personally, anywhere in that island is central. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Yo. <laughs> so Singapore is so small. I'm running as fast as my tiny little legs can carry. <laughs> I'm but- driving as fast this car can go without getting speed trapped. <laughs> <laughs> But still, um, the convention, from what I heard and what I seen, it was perfect. And if I'm not mistaken, you guys got approached by other vendors or other location um, people, right? Yeah, we did. Um, actually, when after uh, we secured the venue, like after like running around for like days and days, mm-hmm. and talking to a whole bunch of people, we got a venue. After we made the uh, announcement that we have confirmed the venue, <laughs> um, and we because of that, um. We knew how large the hall would be, so we kind of like had this rough general idea of like how much space we would like to dedicate to the vendors, to the event, to people sitting around, all that kind of stuff. So we we kind of like um put, posted up on our Facebook like, hey guys, we we're opening like uh like uh vendor applications. Then uh quite a quite a few people uh came up to ask, and we we got 
um, we got some of them, like some artists wanted to a local company, Collateral Damage Studios. Oh. And yeah, and another another lady selling like badges. So I, I guess there was uh, quite some success in that. Um, and um, for those of you who are who think Collateral Damage Studio sounds familiar, they're the designer of Inori. I don't know her surname. The Aizawa. Internet ex- yeah, Aizawa, Internet oh, Explorer's uh, girl. Yeah. And if you were at STGCC in 2012, uh, oh no, 2013, sorry. If you're in STGCC, uh, Singapore Toys Games Comics Convention mm-hmm. in 2013, Singapore they Comics actually, Comics. <laughs> yeah, kind of. They, they also um, had this uh, MLP art book uh, titled Carousel Boutique. Ah, that sounds awesome. So you, you, how many vendors were there in total? Because this was kind of a first year and um, I'm guessing the notice was kind of short. So how many people were there? Oh, uh, in total, there were, there were five uh-huh. People who opened like stalls, uh, including um, Rapid Culture, who were who was hosting the uh, uh, the MLP CCG tournament for us. Wow, you yeah. you, you even have that? <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Yep. They, 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 they saw the, yeah. We we got a whole community of players here. Wow. We meet every Sunday. <laughs> That, that's cool. James. Sunday afternoon ponies and Friday night magic. They go James, together. James, we need to do that, man. We need to do that. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm too busy booking my flight to the next uh, convention. Like, yeah, I'm going there. Like, you got me at CCG. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but no, yeah, 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 I'm not missing that. Because you know, you know, um, you know, uh, James Sunday afternoon, Norman Sunday afternoon, not the same Sunday afternoon. Aww. <laughs> no, no I'm totally attend. And I, I want to attend. It sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, yeah, a small convention, local and all that, but hey, it gives me a chance to go to another country and meet up my friends. That's good. And, you know, the size actually played an advantage because, you know, a lot of people don't know what it's like to be in a small con. Like, we have Comic Fiesta in Malaysia. It's a huge con. There's five figures worth of attendees. It's a sardine can in a huge hall. And, you know, the experience of being in a small space where everyone is in the same fandom is kind of different, but it's also very enlightening as well. It, hmm. it feels, it, it feels good. Like, yes, it does. Uh, yeah, it, it's probably the best part of being in a, in a fandom that is focused on just one thing. Because if you go to like, uh, I'm, oh no, I know, easy target. If you go to the furry fandom, mm-hmm. there is so many people that are fans of so many different things. You may find people that are fans of Sonic or fans, fans of Star Fox or fans of Digimon, fan, Digimon fans of Pokemon. But in the MLP fandom, everybody's fan of the same thing. Except for generations. It's, it's way, it's way more amicable. No, even with, with people from other generations, those it's people compatible. get a bad rap. Those people get a bad rap. And yeah, it is compatible. In the <coughs> end, we all love ponies. True, true. That's what, that's what matters. I will also I will also have to talk with you guys about vendor places places because if you want if you have vendor places open I might go there with some merchandise. Yay. <laughs> um, but more about the vendors like uh, aside aside from those that like applied we we also like actually went out to the look at some of those uh people that we already knew had the potential to be vendors because we wanted like some diversity in the in the uh, merchandise sold by the vendors so that they don't kind of clash. So mm. like, kind of look around. Oh, believe me, the kind of thing that I uh, that I have for sale, nobody has had it in any convention ever. Yeah. What? Oh. We had stuff that we have for sale that's not been seen in any other convention yet either. So yeah, let's make that's this happen. That's going to be awesome. But but anywho, but, but anywho, um, James, got any questions for Can you? When it comes to the organization and all that, have you guys been contacted by the higher apps, like by Hasbro or, some, or other people about what's the purpose of your convention, how it goes, and uh, what do you do in there? Or ha- have they not noticed you yet? To speak about the public, I don't think they've really like noticed too much. I, at the convention itself, there, there was actually like uh, there there was one journalist, freelance journalist, who was actually quite. Uh, interested in the in the nature of the convention, so she actually uh, she actually like came in and it's like oh hi. Then we kind of talked for a while and then and then we worked out we worked out like some uh, news article like um, not too long ago it was released just I think two weeks ago on the Sunday paper. Oh was yeah. It last week? yeah, that, that yeah. I saw that. I saw that. Huge picture of me there. Oh my god. <laughs> But but still, um, well, me and Dan had experience with the press too, and let's just say it was not as awesome as yours. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. Uh, 
So, in terms of guests, like, um, who did yes. you had during the convention? We had meals. Oh, uh, he was a guest too. That's awesome. Yeah, he gave a nice show, and uh, we had two panels. We had a musician panel in the afternoon with um, we had two Singaporean musicians, Hoje Chu and Ice Cube. Both of them are were members of Project. Uh, topic off track, sorry. Yeah, topic off track. Who's the, <laughs> the band that closed Can You? And there was Meals there, and I was there as well to moderate the panel. And after that, Meals rocked the house, mm. of course. And then uh, towards the later part, we had an artist panel featuring uh, four of uh, Singapore's very own. Was it five? Five of Singapore's very own. There was a uh, Julian Yeo, known as DM29 on uh, DeviantArt. There was yeah. Fantasy Blade from YouTube, who does great, you know, animations. We had Nabila, who's known as Nabirar on DeviantArt. Mm-hmm. Rachel Kwa, who is the owner of Singapore's mascot, Temi, who designed the cover for yeah, our album and almost all the art that we have. She's uh, Melo Denisa on DeviantArt. Yeah. I think that's how she pronounces it, right? Mm, Melo Denisa. Melo Denisa. Okay, I, I, I don't know. know. I personally say Denisa. <laughs> I get in trouble for semantics all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> Rachel, if you're hearing this, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, moderating the panel as well was uh, Aaron Ng. AJVL. AJVL on DeviantArt. It's like oh. slightly retired from the pony fandom, but he just does a bit of pony art from time to time, hmm. casually. Okay. But his digital art is great. Oh wow! This this has been passed. So, any plans for a second year? Well, uh, Cantalot University 2015, huh? Well, um, we can say it's for, in the works. Yeah, for now, for now, I think uh, we'd say it's uh, currently in the works. But uh, for more updates, I think it's uh. It's uh, best to like keep uh, stay tuned to us. Like follow our Facebook page at Cantalot University. Go to our website cantalotuniversity.com. That kind of stuff. Mm. We'll be posting updates there about uh, Can You 15. Okay, okay, okay. So one random question from me is: Would they possibly uh, be a podcast panel starring someone from the show? Hey, why not? Just um, drop us a note. We'll see if we can put it in. Yay, James! You're going to second you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, James. Woo. How does it feel to go back to university? Yeah, not very. No, actually, you know what? Far better because my experience with university sucks. <laughs> yeah, mine did as well. Felt good. Oh my view. Oh my god. If I don't ask me what I think of university because my opinion is severely biased. Oh, oh good. Now we now we agree but, on a second thing. But Canterbury University. Yeah, I know. What the hell? Why don't you come more often? You're going to end up turning towards my best friends. No, go. No, go away. Leave me alone. I can relate. I lasted in my university for only four months. Oh my. Oh man. Yeah. So, anywho, um, it's just been me and James talking. So, um, Rome, any questions for can you? No, I have things clear and crystal clear. Yeah. All right. Um, Let's continue. I'm just taking notes. All right. Lay, what about you? Any questions for can you? No, all the the questions have been answered already. And I can only wish them luck for their future endeavors. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, Gonzo, what about you? I got nothing. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, I'm guessing we got nothing, right, James? I got a potato. <laughs> oh, share me, man. Yay. Okay, now I just wanted to say, like Lion said, good luck to you guys, because you totally deserve it. Thank you very Thanks. much, James. Mm. So, anywho, with that, I guess we can end this interview. Um, thank you again, um, guys. Thank you for coming on and sharing your story with us, because it's been really interesting, and I seriously, I can't wait to go to 2015 if there's one, because... Well, not only do I want to go there, I have plans if you guys don't mind. So, yeah, we'll probably talk later. All right. Sure, no problem. All right. So, anywho, thank you guys once again, and let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is shoutouts. My first shoutout goes to you, can you, Bensley, Daniel, we thank, we we think. One one thing, sorry. One thing. Ah. Ah. Anywho, uh, wow, I'm getting derpy. But anywho, thank you for coming on and sharing your stories. Um, it's been awesome talking to you guys. Well, it's been a pleasure to be on as well. Yeah. Pleasure to be back. <laughs> yeah, you should be. Back. Thanks for having us here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I wish you luck. And here's a, here's here's my deal to you guys. If you guys are going to promote this convention for 2015, talk to me. I'll post it on the show like what I did with Everfree. Oh, okay. Cool. Sir. Cool. Yeah, we, we can do that. Hmm? Cool, cool. We will do that. Yay. <laughs> so, yeah. and to you, James, thank you for coming on and sending on your soapbox. It was really entertaining. I, I had to. 
I have to. It's what the fandom drives me to. I like to think that we are a bunch of very civil, good people, but... That's not a word! When they take something from us, we act like... That's not a word! Monkeys in the in the zoo. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, anywho. I think it's human nature. Have you even know. seen a monkey in a zoo? Oh, boy. I have seen monkeys in the zoo. They get to... better than this fandom sometimes. <laughs> I had to clean up after a monkey in a zoo once. They told us, oh, we're going to the zoo for a visit. Oh, no, it ended up to be a school project. Oh, what? God. So, anywho, um, to you, Rom, thank you for coming on reading the news. My pleasure. And to you, Lion, thank you for coming on and sharing your knowledge of animation with us. That was... You're welcome. Mm -hmm. And Gonzo, to you too. Thank you, man. I'm just sitting here looking pretty. All I did throughout this entire episode... You, you could feel your prettiness <laughs> seeping through the microphone. You have, okay. Okay. You have, you have your room's ambiance that contributes to the sound effects. Of the it's very valuable. Very... Yeah, crank Ouch. that reverb. <laughs> yeah, that reverb's amazing. Uh, anyway, James, what about you? Shout out? Uh, yeah, I want to give a shout out to Wilson because I'm pretty sure he's listening to us right now while he's working. <laughs> Uh, and I want to uh, give a big shout out to uh, Fernin, who's the guy who got me employed with this comic that never ends, and that I've been <laughs> working on it the whole time I've been doing this uh, podcast with you guys. Awesome. And of course, but last but not but not least, uh, a big shout out to everyone here right now. Of course, Norman, Lion, uh, Dan. <laughs> One thing, uh, 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 gone. So I forgot about half of the people that were in the in the call here right now. Bensley and <laughs> but, Rom. Bensley and Rome, because yeah, you you guys were very good sports. You could have you could have thrown me out or kicked me out, but no, you let me stay. Uh, I had to brandish my we- my 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 old cane to someone. <laughs> it's cool. And Rome, thank you for not kicking me out. No problem. And Rome, what about you? Hi, mom. Uh, same one as before. <laughs> yep. All righty then. Lion, what about you? Oh, shout out community to everyone. To you, Norman. To you, James. And. Awesome, awesome meeting you guys. Meet you Hopefully you had a lot, you'll have a lot more luck with the next one. And one last shout out to all those other soapboxes in the world that couldn't get James's speech on them. I cry for you. Oh. I am sorry. I was very harsh. Oh, and yeah. Okay. Also, do check out Lions and um, latest animation, um, Nightmare, Nightmare, Mare, Night, 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 Midnight, Night, Midnight, 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 Mid
Like without without her starting the idea, I, I'm not sure if uh, a convention would ever have happened in Singapore. Oh, you got STGCC, so yeah. <laughs> oh, no, not not like pony specific, okay. you know. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then. Oh well. Um, other than a shout out to everyone here because I think that's understood. Um, I want to give a big shout out to those people who turned up at Annie Manga Key over the weekend and stopped by our pony booth right there. It was booth E1 with plenty of balloons and ponies. And a shout out to Charlie and Ning and Celine for working with us on that pony booth. It's been a great pleasure. And uh, we look forward to do it again, doing it again soon. If, well, you want pony merch in Malaysia, come join us at CF Mini in Penang, which is happening at the end of September. Oh, cool. I wish I could be there, man, but you know, timing. Yeah, and it's double the distance for you in Penang, uh, yeah. upstairs. Mm. But, I w- but I will be in Singapore for STGCC, so I might see you there. Oh, cool. And one thing, what about you? Oh, I would like to shout out to SBS, uh-huh. which is the Singapore Burning Society, for all the support. I mean, like, without without the fan base in Singapore, there won't be a convention. That's true, that's true. Yeah, so I'm really grateful for their support. And if someone could post it there, that would be awesome, because I don't have access there. <laughs> Alright. Oh, man. You, want a, you want a golden key? Bend to the boss. Uh, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. So, anyway, there was shout out. So, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thebizshow at gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach me at emails in description. I forgot how to do this. Anyway, Twitter, the MBS Show Twitter account is at the MBS Show. Sweetie Bird will, uh, Sweetie Bird will do a lot of work for this week. Oh, yeah, yeah. And as for me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet stuff about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy, and probably my trip. Yay. And James, what about you? Oh, you can find me on DeviantArt on jamescork.deviantart.com. You can get my Twitter where nobody follows me, <laughs> but hey, it's uh, James Lower Dash Cork uh, on Twitter. And then you can find my Ask Pony Tumblr on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Awesome. And Rom? You can find me at twitter.com slash showmewallz69 or at my DVNR, relicious.dnr.com or my Tumblr, I am relicious.tumblr.com. Awesome, awesome. And yeah, Lane. I'm everywhere. <laughs> Lane, what about you? You can reach me at mind. r underscore s-i-r-o-i-s on Twitter as well as lionheartcartoon.divineart.com. Okay, awesome. And Gonzo? You can find me at my usual spots, YouTube, DA, Tumblr... Yeah, yeah, I'll link everything then. I'll link everything. So, what about you guys? Can you? Where can they find? Can you? Can they find you? <laughs> yeah, sure. Can you can be found on Twitter at cantalot underscore uni, and you can get a hold of us on Facebook as well, fb dot com slash cantalot university. You'll find those in the show notes. And uh, Bensley, you go ahead with your first. Yep. Well, uh, my you guys can actually like uh, find me on my Twitter, which is uh, at plush teacher. Which is P L U S H S T I T C H E R plush teacher, and I'm going to be creating like a demon art uh, soon, maybe a couple of days, maybe like right after this recording. I I because I I've been meaning to make a demon art for quite some time. And get off your butt and do it. <laughs> okay, man. Okay, I go I go make it. But yeah, you you guys can just find me there. Uh, off to you then. Awesome. Then. Uh, um, one thing. What about you? Um, I don't have a Twitter account. Oh, it's okay, it's okay then. So, um, any, anything else you want to share or? Um, no, you can just go to Can You and you can contact me there if you really need it. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you want your daily dose of perky pessimism, <laughs> um, nonsense about the Malaysian government and drama, you can, oh, no, I don't do drama anymore. So yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Saint Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. Emphasis on Saint right now. Uh, and, uh, okay, fine, fine. Okay. And uh, you want to find me on Facebook, uh, fb.com slash st.pinky. And uh, yeah, nothing on my DeviantArt. Saintpinky.deviantart.com. Go there, see the tumbleweeds. All right. Uh, it's been a while since I heard that line. But anyway, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher, Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebook and you can also catch us on PonyvilleLive.com. Links will be provided in the show notes. So I have been Norman Sanzo. The perch works. <laughs> I am Romwald. I am a relaxed my husband. Hey, I'm Lionheart. I'm not relaxed. I'm just Lionheart. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm, I'm sorry. My throat's like dying now. But yeah, uh, Bensley here. <laughs> I have been Daniel Anthony. Good to be back. 
Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, let's go. Your name, your name, you sign off. Wan Jing, yep. Anywho, can you, can you? <laughs> uh, I just noticed that's funny. Can you feel it? Can, can Telok University, can you go there? <laughs> we will see you next year. Whoa. <laughs> can you? <laughs> Anywho, bye bye guys. See you at Can You. <laughs> see Watch you out, here comes the train! <laughs> ah! <laughs> a mark of one's destiny singled out alone fulfilled. Let the rainbow remind you that together, together, together we will always.